Hi, everybody. Let's talk stash today, specifically those fiddly little bits. Hi, I'm Lynn, and I'm a crafter with an emphasis on knitting and sewing. Welcome to my channel. Most crafters have an endless stash of materials, and I'm no different. I mean, I actually kept yarn in my kitchen cabinets instead of pots and pans, and some of it is older than my grown son. But as someone who has not only become more concerned about the environment, but is also a minimalist, I can no longer ignore the elephant in the room, my stash. Join me on my journey as I sew, knit, and craft my way through my stash, exploring creative possibilities and stretching my imagination to fulfill my stash's potential and bring it to life. So I'm taking my challenge to use up my stash literally. This means everything. I mean, it's easy to use a yard of fabric, but what do you do with all the little bits? You know, that half inch piece you trimmed off or the 18 inches of yarn left over from a project. Yes, I've cut it that close. I am so proud of myself. And this is one of the sweaters that I was actually able to do that on. But most people would throw those little bits out, not me. Little disclaimer here, I'm going to be talking specifically about fabric today. Yarn will be covered in an upcoming video. The way I handle scraps is this. Anything less than, you know, a half an inch to two inches goes towards stuffing. This includes small yarn ends, clip threads, seams I've trimmed, and serger scraps. I keep a bag right by my sewing machine here to put them all in as I'm working. Then when I'm listening to a podcast or binge watching Netflix, I'll cut them up even more to get nice little scraps like this. This is what the final product looks like, which is used mainly for pillow forms. Now I made the pillow form for this pillow here. If I can, if I can untangle myself here for, for this pillow here, and I'm going to do a tutorial on my method. But as you can see, it created a nice, smooth pillow form. Um, and this is all from my stash. There are no lumps and bumps like you get with polyfill. Now, I haven't tried it on stuffed animals yet, but I don't see why you couldn't use it for some projects. Smaller ones, maybe not. But this is a much better alternative than buying polyfill. You'll keep all those little pieces out of the landfill. You'll save yourself money and polyfill is petroleum based. Eco-Friendly Crafts did a whole post on the problems with polyfill and I'll put the link down below. So the stuffing bag is the end of the road for my scraps. Anything over two inches I consider viable and keep. And behind me is an assortment of scraps and leftovers that I pulled from my stash. I went through my quilting fabrics this weekend and I sorted them out. So I found some pre-cut squares And I also have this pile of smaller fabrics here. And anything that is smaller than that is relegated to these little bags. Now, from these squares, I plan on making half triangles, which is this. What you do, for those of you who aren't familiar with quilting, is you take two different squares of fabric and you place them together, right sides facing, and you're gonna draw a diagonal line from corner to corner, and you stitch a quarter inch on either side of that line, cut it apart on the line, and then what you have is two squares that will look like this. And I plan on using these to make a queen size quilt, which will be donated. And I've already set aside some um, yardage in my stash that I'm not particularly fond of, um, specifically for the backing. So that will be even more of my stash that I get to use up. Now these bags here contain scraps that are too big for the stuffing bag, but not quite big enough for the triangle quilt. And I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with these yet, but I'm playing around with two ideas. The first is to work freeform. As I was looking up scrap quilt ideas, I stumbled onto crumb quilts, crumbs basically being small scraps of fabric. 
It's just one form of free form. You can create a larger piece of fabric by sewing up all the smaller ones in a random manner. So none of your blocks are going to be identical. And there are a lot of different designs that you can create from these blocks. You can cut them into squares and insert them into a more traditional quilt design with sashing or whatever. Either way, the results are amazing. Freeform piecing allows you to work with a lot of different colors. And the beauty of working this way is they all go together with while a limited palette is going to require a bit more care in combining colors and patterns. Now, my favorite way to work a free to work freeform is to do crazy log cabin quilt blocks, which is how I made my most recent quilt. I cut nine and a half inch squares of fabric using it as a foundation and then starting in the middle, this would be the middle right here, placing it a little bit off center, I go around and add all my different fabrics, working around as you would in a traditional log cabin pattern. But I didn't measure anything or plan out colors, so my blocks are a little wonky, which I think only adds to their charm. I did divide my scraps up into color families and just randomly pulled from those. And when I had the square covered, this is my foundation square here, I trimmed it to nine, inch, nine inches. And as you can see from this block, the first batch of foundation squares I made was exactly nine inches, which was probably a mistake, which is why the subsequent ones were a little larger so I can cut them down to size. Now, you don't have to use the foundation square. For some reason, that's just the way I started it and didn't want to change halfway through. But it did help use up a lot of fabric and it added a lot of warmth to my quilt. So those of you that live in colder climates, this is a great way to get just that little bit of warmth added to it. These freeform fabrics can be used for more than just quilts. They can be used for bags, pillows, curtains, shower curtains, hats, wall hangings, table runners, placemats, hot pads, clothes. Just imagine a quilted jacket with all these shapes and colors. Or maybe just use a little bit to add some color with a pocket, cuffs, or a collar made from freeform. Pretty much anything made of fabric can be made with freeform fabric. The other method I'm considering to use up these bits is to make an art quilt using the freezer paper method. Now this is a more labor intensive process, um, not only in the making, but in the planning. I made a patchwork flower pillow in this way, which I detail on my blog. I'll have the link down below. And I loved that project. Designing an art quilt would really help flex my creative muscle. And I'm toying around with the idea of light and shadow. So we'll see what comes of that. But Lynn, you say, I don't quilt. My stash is all made up of fashion fabrics. Don't worry, I got your back. First of all, many dress fabrics lend themselves beautifully to the freeform technique. Victorian crazy quilts were made up of silks, satins, and velvets, so you have no excuse. And while you might not make um, want to make a whole quilt with these fabrics as they might not hold up well under regular wear and tear. I think they would make great pillows and show pieces. So maybe a quilt for the guest bedroom. I also have dress weight fabrics and what I plan on making with them is flowers. I am obsessed with them. They make beautiful decorations for clothes, bags, hair accessories, wreaths, bridal bouquets, and because I refuse to buy gift wrap and bows, what a waste of resources and money to buy something that is meant to be torn up and thrown out. I think fabric flowers would be a beautiful way to adorn gifts. Now, one way stretch knit fabrics could also be used in a freeform quilt, but I would use a foundation block just to stabilize them or maybe use some interfacing. Also, as knit fabrics don't fray, they could be used as appliques for t-shirts and a great way to cover up if you got a hole or a stain on one you love and give it extra life. Natalie Channon has several books on the technique and it is beautiful. If I ever got married again, I'd make my dress using her techniques, just saying. 
So I hope this video was helpful and got you rethinking your fabric stash and how you can make use of all of it. I think a challenge like this really gets the creative juices flowing. So have fun. I'd love to hear your stash busting, <laughs> your stash busting ideas. So please share them in the comments section below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you want to follow me on my journey, hit subscribe and the bell to receive notifications when a new video is up. And you can get additional content on my blog. Links are down below. Happy to stashing and see you in the next one.